All right, so this is the Rio Tech HVAC devices on Fabaro, uh, what is it, essentially Fabaro systems, particularly in this one, it's the uh, Fabaro Home Center 3, uh, as is the newest and, uh, well, brightest of the uh, Home Center controllers. So just thought we'd go through with this. So firstly, the devices we're gonna be testing out today are the Rio Tech Thermostat 500, uh, also known as the ZTS 500. Um, it's a programmable wall thermostat, um, accepts both 12, 24 volt AC or DC sources of control, two stage heating, two stage cool, and uh, two stage fan. One moment, move something so I can actually see. Um, also supports uh, Z Wave dual mode, uh, which is always listening or floors. Uh, always listening is what's typical for your actual uh, normal like uh, relay switches, where essentially they're always expecting commands. Uh, Flores is essentially they send out commands and they get picked up by it. Um, you can also power these devices up off uh, general power supplies, so 24 volt DCs, um, as well as also accepts um, four uh, AA batteries as well in order to power itself up. The second device that we're going to be looking at today as well is the Robotech Z-Wave AC controller. Um, so this actually works with quite a few um, AC, well, essentially split system interfaces, um, generic IR blaster of sorts, uh, powers up of a five volt USB or uses two AA batteries, um, has a built-in temperature sensor. So you can actually check the actual room it's attached to, which is quite useful considering it needs to, it's an IR device. So it needs to be able to actually beam a signal to the control device. Um, it actually has a built-in code library of over 250 brands. Um, there's actually an entire list of them available um, actually on our site as well. And it's quite a comprehensive list. Uh, configuration for it can be quite interesting. However, if you do have a rather uh, obscure brand that's not actually available, it does also support IR code loading as well. So you don't have to worry about having a certain uh, AC system that doesn't exactly mesh with the pre-existing uh, code library. Um, you can instead manually assign uh, individual uh, essentially button presses on your remote control to control individual parts of an AC system. It essentially just mimics them. So firstly regarding this, we're gonna be doing HVAC scenes. Uh, that's general use. Uh, in the Fulmar Home Center 2 system, there are two scene types available. There are block scenes, quite easy to build. Um, they essentially set up very generic um, if you've used Home Center 2 systems before, you're probably used to block scenes, though they have actually slightly changed them. Uh, we will be actually going over that. Um, something we will not be going over today will be the Lao scene control for it. Um, it essentially allows a bit more advanced control for the systems, um, but generally it's not really necessary for your day-to-day -day usage of an actual um, HVAC system in your house. Um, so what I'll actually do now is I will show you what the interface actually looks like one of those guys and just make a quick one for you. Um, firstly, what I will actually do. All right, so this is your Fabaro Home Center essentially base screen. Um, as you can see at the current point in time, all we have in there is a motion sensor with temperature sensor. So firstly, we're going to have to actually add our devices we're gonna be using. So first I'll be doing the ZTS, sorry, ZTS, ZXT600. Um, very simply, just go to your add devices section Add yourself a new device, which is your Z-Wave device. Set the time for it, which is be 30 seconds and include. So for this, so let's include this guy. And he'll go through his adding process. Um, that guy's actually quite small. Um, and yeah, his IR blaster is located on the front of the controller itself. So you can mount that up to any generic USB port as essentially as long as it gives five volt. So you can connect them to things such as set top boxes or computers or TVs if it has a compatible slot for it. Just wait for that device to finish adding. As you can see, it's loading through its parameters. Something that is actually quite useful on this device as well. I'll just call this the AC. Thermostat as well is the fact of this device actually has a template for it as well, which makes it quite useful in order to actually set up everything. 
Uh, so I'll just close that off. The second device we need to add is this behemoth over here. One moment. This may slide into view. A bit more so you can actually see it. So this is the ZST500, uh, currently running off battery life. Uh, as you can see with this little icon up here, it's currently not connected to a Z-Wave network, so it'll simply just include it into a network right now. So to do so, simply go to your add function again, it's already set up for it, and inclusion's begun. So now all you have to do is hold down this button on the right-hand side until it goes Z-Wave, press the plus, and then tap it again, and it will include it the network. As you can see, it's added device, and now all I have to do is simply just go through its configuration. Now it does say that adding device is complete, uh, but it hasn't actually finished just yet. There we go. And once again, it pops in as both a HVAC system control, as well as a temperature sensor. So for this, I should just call this the ZXT. 610. This is very easy to do. Now, what we need to do is we need to actually go on to creating a scene for it. So some of the very basic scenes you can set up for it are things such as uh, motion detection. So presence detection of just say you're no longer at home um, can be set up by just doing some very simple things. Um, the reason why we have a motion sensor is so we can do that thing. So what we want to do is we want to essentially uh, first be our trigger device, which will be our motion sensor. So it'll be our single, it's an office, and our motion sensor. We want it to be whenever it is motion is detected, and we want it to be detected. I'll actually move that motion sensor I currently have into a position where I won't trigger because that will uh, mess with this entire thing. One moment. Um, so that is simply the trigger. So whenever motion is detected, it will trigger active. And then we want to have what we want to actually happen. So in this instance, we simply select the single device, the office, and then the actual actuating devices. So for this one, it'll actually be 35. I forgot to actually change the ID for it, but simply change our thermostat mode. So thermostat mode, we'll set it to, uh, it's a bit warm, so cool. And then we just simply press save here. So what we'll be able to see here is our block scene is created and will actually activate whenever motion is detected. So if we go back to the main menu, as you can see, there's no motion detected. If I'm to turn this device on to, let's just say, heat, you'll see it also pops up an interface as saying it's set, set point to 20, 28 degrees. And then simply detect motion for it. And as you can see, little LED has actually disappeared. Now, if we actually go into this system itself as well, it's not actually active anymore. It is in idle mode. So that's just a very basic scene that you can do for essentially, um, you can set timers for it, so there's a delay. So it'll actually check, uh, let's just say, if there hasn't been motion in the certain area about half an hour or something like that, it'll actually automatically turn off the system so you don't end up wasting power and possibly making a very cold room. So that's a very basic building block scene. Uh, as I said, we won't be covering lab scenes because they're a bit too complex for this point. Now I'll be showing you the Home Center 3 climate panel. Now the climate panel was actually a new inclusion they put into the Home Center 3 controllers. Uh, Home Center 2s didn't actually have it beforehand. Um, it allows you to essentially set up an automatic schedule in order to actually, you know, heat, cool, or turn off your certain systems. Um, in scenes, it does actually have additional function as well, as it allows you to manually override systems. Uh, so you can set it up so it will instead it completely ignore its schedule for a set amount of time. Or as example, you go on vacation. So you can set how long your vacation time is, and then it just doesn't turn on. Like that schedule can still be active but it just won't activate until your set time period is actually up. Um, I'll actually show you the interface as well. So as you can see, we're back on the screen again. Simply go to the options on the left, and then there is a little guy over here called climate. As you can see, we currently have no zone set up, so we simply just add a zone. So uh, it can do automatically configure zones. For this, we'll simply do manually. 
because I want actually to select certain devices. So we want to select our thermostat device, this guy right here, as our main heating system. So let's control heat mode. Add that in. And as you can see, it's already clicked active, and now it's clicked deactive because it automatically activated its scene. Um, well, sorry, not scene, it's actual schedule for it. Um, this schedule you can essentially just add more devices to if you want. Uh, for this instance, we only really need one device, which is the ZTS 500. If you click a little arrow on the right side, you will see that there's actually an entire schedule from Monday all the way to Sunday. So let's just say we want to change it so uh, 18 degrees is a uh, really, really low set point for heating. Uh, just uh, up that to, let's just say, comfortable 24 degrees at that point in time. Um, let's get rid of this morning block because it doesn't actually make sense as why it's doing it. So let's just say that our morning hours are from eight o'clock in the morning to, let's just say, nine o'clock actually might do it a little bit earlier. So we wake up at seven o'clock and leave home. That will essentially go to 24 degrees. Um, and yes, we can also, just so an example, we want to do for every single working days, simply click working days and click copy. As you can see, it's already filled in all of our working days and our weekend is completely clear now. Uh, you do also have an option of selecting the entire week if you want, or it's copy across or the individualized days themselves. So if I were to simply change this and make it so only my, my Monday, my Thursday, and my Friday all match, so we press copy. And then as you can see, it actually set up individually as well. Uh, you can do that in every single one of them if you want. It allows for you to do quite a bit more customization with actual um, scheduling of HVAC systems, but also, uh, you're able to set it up so there's heating, but there's also, in this instance, cooling. As you can see, it's set up another one just like this. Uh, this one is currently controlling this device, which has no real physical updates and actually showing anything for it. But you can also deactivate and activate these at will. So uh, coming into summer, we're probably going to not want a heating system set up. So we're just going to want a cooling one. And as you can see from here, it is only selecting one device. Uh, it actually blacks out this device because it's already set for a heating command. Uh, so you don't have to worry about it being in multiple different rooms. So we have two separate zones and I will just, for the time being, turn this off. And then custom quick apps, specifically for HVAC. Um, now, quick apps was, uh, if any of you have used a home center two before in the past, you might have seen a mention of virtual devices. Uh, quick apps are the new sort of virtual devices that Fabara has put in the system. Uh, they run a little bit smoother and essentially are more user friendly in how it's set up. However, they do require some level of knowledge on LAO coding. Um, as you can see, uh, basic display on the left hand side of just the zone temperature settings and then essentially parts that go into it on the right hand side. So it's a, it requires a bit of knowledge. Um, it generally extends all like the capabilities for your actual system. Um, unlike scenes where you put in LAO require activation triggers, let, let that be you actually manually clicking it or an example, a motion sensor in order to trigger it. Um, you can actually make quick apps just go through cycles. So um, every 15 seconds actually check something um, and essentially runs through without much issues. Um, that'll just go until indefinitely. Um, it also does allow some integration with devices that aren't specifically Z-Wave, uh, such as an example, uh, Intercease and cool automation systems. So cool link hubs and cool link, just cool master nets. Um, I actually have an example of a quick app for you. I'll simply just change back to the controller again. Quick app files are actually quite easy to use once you actually have them. So for this, I will simply leave this area because we do not need to be here anymore and go up to devices. So as you can see, we have our Z-Wave devices here that are currently set. We simply want to add a new device. Now, uh, the Z-Wave, NICE and other devices. On other devices, you can see quick apps which will allow you to actually make an individualized quick app. However, for this instance, we already have a file. So for that, we'll simply do upload file and then I already have a pre-existing file that I made earlier. Simply press open. 
And as you can see, there is already a temperature sensor set up in the system with a essentially a bit of a display function. Um, at the current point in time, this will not actually configure anything and won't actually function. The reason for it is because we need to change some of the variables for it. So as you can see, there's currently default variables set in there. So we simply just need to go through and get the variables for it. So temp, uh, what is it, controls. So we simply just go back to the Z wave and we want our temperature sensor. So that's 27, 34 and 37. Uh, we also want the IDs of our heat and cool settings. So our heating system is 33. And our cooling, actually, no, sorry, it's the other way around. Uh, 36 is that. One moment. 36 is our heat system, and 33 is our cool system. So if we go back to our little quick app, we can just simply change these variables. So uh, our first temperature sensor shall be 27, which is based off the Fabara motion sensor. Our second one be based on the AC controller, which is 34. And our third and final one is based off the thermostat right here, which is 37. Now, what we can also do for this is we can actually set up, as you can see, there is heat and there is cooling and so on and so forth. Um, so what we can actually do for this is change the heat control we want. Um, you can add additional variables later on, but our heat control for this will simply just be um, this unit here. So the device ID for that is 36. And then the other one is 33, which is our AC control. Now, because a certain AC systems, uh, sorry, certain um, uh, HVAC systems can do heating and cooling, you can actually put them both in. So an example for this one, I will actually add the ZTS 500 as well to our cooling function as there is a cool function on it. And simply press save. Uh, now that that's done, we can simply go into edit preview as you can see, it is actually loaded through zone one, zone two, and zone three. Now, these aren't actually particularly zones. Um, zone one is simply the thermostat, oh, sorry, the uh, motion sensors. Then zone two is our AC controller, and zone three is simply our thermostat right there. Um, as you can see, there's an HVAC controller on the bottom, and we can simply go back to the main menu, it pops up with a temperature control as well, which I have actually configured to have the average of all the temperatures in the area. Open this up. And then we actually have a little control functions down here. Um, so let's say we want to actually set it to, it's a bit warm, so set it to cool. Set a cool command to that. And then what our desired cool temperature is. Uh, so this, let me just say 18 degrees. And then set to cool. As you can see, that guy's actually clicked over. Um, Let's just say we want it to warm up. We can just set it to 24 degrees. That'll actually click deactive because he's no longer needed. Uh, there's some basic automation in the back end for it. And then set it to heat, which will actually activate because it has judged that our average temperature is below our desired temperature. So that's generally a bit of a quick app. So yes, that's actually the end of the presentation. This is a rather short one, um, but if you do actually have any questions, um, feel free to contact us. Uh, there's the phone number and also the office email. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to send it through your emails. Um, there is an off function you can set for it. So it comes down to you set your areas where you want it to specifically be off as well. So it has heat, cooling, and off as commands for it. Other than that, um, we have actually finished.